Number 29, letter A. To what temperature must you raise a copper wire originally at 20 degrees Celsius to double its resistance, neglecting any changes in dimensions? Hmm. Okay. So um, let's first write down what we know. Okay. So it says to what temperature must you raise? Right, the copper wire, which was originally at 20 degrees Celsius. So they're basically asking us for the final temperature. So that's the question. They told us an initial temperature. They said, hey, it's going to be 20 degrees Celsius. They also told us that it's copper wire. Okay, we might not know yet what to do with that. It probably is important, but let's just you know forget about that part for a second. It then also tells us that uh, the resistance is going to double. Now, it doesn't actually give us figures. Right? It doesn't say it goes from a resistance of 10 ohms to 20 ohms or 50 ohms to 100 ohms or whatever the case is. Um, but we know proportionally that going from you know 10 ohms to 20 ohms is basically the same as going from 50 to 100. So you can actually make up uh, any number you like, any numbers you like, as long as there one is double the next. Um, however, though, here what I'm going to do is I'm going to write something like this. The initial resistance, I don't know what it is, okay? I don't know what the number should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a variable, all right? I'm going to call it, ah, the initial resistance, all right? I'm just going to use R sub i. So what I'm saying is that the initial resistance will equal the initial resistance. Huh, profound. Now, what about then the final resistance? What is the relationship between the initial resistance and the final resistance. Well, we know that the final resistance here must be double the initial resistance. Why? Well, because that's what they're saying, to double the, its resistance. So it started at one value, R sub i, whatever that is, and the final value is going to be double it. And therefore, we have to take two and multiply it by that initial. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, what I do is I take a step back and I think about, well, I have changing temperatures, I have changing resistances. How are they related to one another? Well, first and foremost, that as the temperature of an object changes, the resistance of current or to the current flow through that material also increases. Okay, it's a linear relationship. Uh, basically, over the, over, the mo over the majority, I should say, of the um, change in temperature. It's not linear over the entire, entire thing. But that's actually what kind of superconductors are, uh, how they're kind of made. They're, they're almost brought down to absolute zero. Um, and the closer you get to absolute zero, um, the better the conductors become. Interesting, right? That's because the little atoms in there aren't kind of like jiggling around so much. They're kind of lined up nicely and they conduct a lot better. Anyway, let's get back to this. So um, what's the formula now that relates these variables? Well, here it is. Okay, I'm going to alter it a little bit. The just with subscripts, by the way, the final resistance will equal the initial resistance multiplied by one plus alpha multiplied then by the change in the temperature of the object. So basically the only new term here is going to be this thing alpha. So what is alpha? Alpha basically will represent the uh, per temperature change, the value of the per temperature change of an object. So for example, if alpha were to be, you know, let's just say five, and the object changed by one uh, degree Celsius, that means I would take five and multiply it by one, right? And I get this whole term to be five. So basically what's happening is I'm saying that as the temperature changes by one degree Celsius, the resistance then of the object is going to be changing by five units. Okay, more or less. All right. So that's kind of what alpha is. Now, every unit, every, uh, not unit, every material has a uh, different alpha. They might look the same, but they have to be, they will be different um, depending upon how sensitively uh, you're able to measure the uh, coefficient as what they call it alpha. So we know here for copper down here at the bottom, guys, here it is. Okay. That's the alpha value for copper. So why don't we start plugging in things that we know? Now, what are we going to plug in for the final resistance? We don't know the value, but we do know its relationship to the initial. So let's just plug that in two times the initial resistance. What's the initial resistance? Well, it's just the initial resistance, right? That was that profound statement I made before. And plus then, uh, so I should say one plus then the alpha value of copper. So that's 3.9 times 10 to the minus three. Multiplied now by the change in temperature. Now what I want to do here is I don't, you can leave it in by the way, you can leave it as change in temperature, that would be totally fine. 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand on that. I know the final, I know the temperature change is the final minus the initial. And therefore, I'm going to just plug in now the temperature that I know. I know the initial temperature, right? So I'm going to plug in TF minus then the 20 degrees Celsius. All right. And now all I got to do is start calculating. Now what I, what I'm going to do to kind of simplify my life a little here is, um, if only, if, if only if it were that simple, um, I realize that basically this whole term on the right hand side is multiplied by R sub I and I can divide out the R sub I then for both sides, right? Now what I'm going to do, it looks a little more complicated here because I got more material there, but if I divide out the right hand side by R sub I, that will cancel. And if I divide this side by R sub I, oh my goodness, that cancels. So look what happens to the initial resistance. It just goes bye bye. That's why sometimes, even if you're like, I don't know, I don't have the numbers. That's okay. Start using variables. Think about the relationships and I almost guarantee it'll work out beautifully. Kind of like life, right? Just works out beautifully sometimes. So one plus, right? Aren't you thinking that in your physics class? Isn't life working out beautifully? So now I'm going to do a distribution here. So 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3 times the final temperature. All right, then minus now 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3 multiplied by 20. So why don't we see what that is? So 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3 times 20. Don't forget it's going to be negative. So uh, 0 0.078. All right, great. So now what I'm going to do? I'm going to combine some like terms, right? I see that these are alike. So I'm going to combine them on the right hand side. So two will equal then one minus that particular value. Let's just use the calculator just to make sure. So we're going to get 3.9 times 10 to the minus three multiplied then by the final temperature. And that is then going to be now plus 0 0.922. Okay. Now I'm going to subtract on over this value. All right. I got to isolate my variable, right? Okay, wunderbar. Now let's take two and subtract that value from it. So we get a while, about a value of a 1.0, hold on one second, 1.078. And that is equal to now 3.9 times 10 to the minus three multiplied by then the final temperature. So what do I need to do here? I need to divide this guy out, right? Since I ran out of space, I'm not gonna write it down. I'm gonna take the 1.078 and divide it now by 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3, and voila. So we find now that the final temperature here is going to be, of the wire, right, of the copper, is going to be 276 degrees Celsius. I guess three sig figs are fine. Whatever. I guess technically it should be two. Ah, who cares, right? Who cares? Who cares? I don't know. Don't worry about it. Um, but, yeah, I guess it should technically be two. But what ifs? Um... So there it is. That's going to be the final temperature. Okay. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Now, a uh, letter B, does this happen in household wiring under ordinary circumstances? Um, no, 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 no. It does not happen under ordinary circumstances. Uh, this particular value, 276 degrees Celsius. That's like, I don't even know, 600 cell Fahrenheit, 500 Fahrenheit, something crazy. Uh, you're very close to the auto ignition, auto ignition temperature of uh, the wood. So if you have copper wire running through your walls and your walls are, your studs are made out of wood, which is highly probable, um, can anybody say fire? So it doesn't really happen under uh, ordinary circumstances. So I really wouldn't worry uh, about it. Um, what the f Oh, sh I gotta go.